we're heading to the wind. Yep. And on course. It's about 97 degrees. Change the skies. Oh, sunny. Yeah, it's fun. Ooh, nice. All right, we're heading out. All right, so tonight we're seeing Tom Papa. Who? Tom Papa. Tom Papa at the wind. It's a um, comedian. Yeah. And then we'll probably go to Lake of Dreams because they have a new. Yeah, they've updated the show. Yeah, they've had an updated show. So. And they updated the decks and stuff. So. Yep. We'll get a look at the new. Uh, parasol. Par well, I don't think it's called par Parasol Up and Parasol Down anymore. What's well, not? One's called Aft Deck or something like that. That's oh, the okay. patio out. So they must have revamped it. We'll probably go there and walk through the wind. shops in here. Really, really nice. Ooh, look at that. Bottega Veneta. St. Laurent. And uh, what's the place? Um, what about the, uh, oh shoot! Uh, Sinatra? Yeah, Sinatra. Because you're probably gonna pay just about as much. It's nice, but Sinatra is absolutely gorgeous. Here's Louis Vuitton. All right, here's the. Um, in case you're interested, it's the menu. I don't know if you can see it, hopefully. Not too bad of prices. They got pizza, lots of courses, like appetizers. Yeah. It's good. What's the name of the food called again? There's a cafe over here. Which way does what time is it? Allegro? Yeah, oh, Allegro. Okay. Oh, okay, here's the name, Allegro. Yeah, it's good. This way. All right, so here's who we're seeing. Did I already get that? <laughs> no, just keep on the road. Let me tell you. family reunion. Here. Okay. 
Hi. 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 Uh, Okay. Uh, being documented. Hi. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Am I going to be in a Hi. documentary? Oh, a vlog. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, Hi, you're good. Thank you. <laughs> Just right through the open Thank you. Door, Thank you. <laughs> All right. Should have told her what it was. Yeah. Pass it on. Good evening. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, there's another one. Yeah. I can get some video. All right, we're getting in line for a drink. Sound check. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a special. This theater, it is incredible. This is so nice. It's fancy and it's over. We're outside. It's over, right? Is COVID over? Are we done? Kira Soltanovich, everybody, give it up for Kira. <laughs> so good to see you. You look great. It's nice to see all your faces and all your stuff. Very nice. Good job. Good job. I hope you had a great day. I hope you got into town okay. Or if you live in town, I hope you uh, got through the traffic okay. <laughs> Remember what a great day meant? Something really cool happened to you? Like a great day? Meant like someone, you made out with someone new. <laughs> we got a promotion at work. Now a great day is any day something <laughs> apocalyptic doesn't happen. <laughs> oh, what a great day. We're not all going to die at the same time. Yay. Yay. <laughs> For us. For us. Fairy tales, if you were missing a password, it was an adventure and you got rewards for it. Right? If you were missing a password at the gates, you had to go off into the dark forest and become friends with a talking crow and beat a demon with a willow stick. And then you got the password and you returned to the doors and they opened up for you. And a unicorn gave you a ride to a wizard who gave you uh, gold coins and sexual favors. <laughs> If only I had the courage to call someone on the phone three hours ago. I don't want to talk to human beings anymore. Three hours to get stuffy, crusty bread and just shove it into my aorta and possibly die tonight, which would be a good ending to that story. Or would it? Or would it? What happens if you get up to heaven and they're like, we're going to forgive you for your sins. You weren't perfect, but you tried. Welcome. You're a good person. Welcome to heaven. What's your username and password? <laughs> I don't think they ever gave me that. Yes, everybody got that. I just wanted to see my dead grandpa. Well, you should have written it down. Someplace important, you moron. It's too much. It's too much. We're slaves. We're just caught up in these devices. There's no turning back, my friends. There's no turning back. Uh, you ever have those days when you leave home and you forget your phone and it's too late to go back? Oh, what a glorious day that is. That's a great day. 
That's a great day. After the dry heaving and the crying, <laughs> and tugging on grown-ups' pants in the mall, asking for help. Once you get through that, it's a great day. You're just walking around with your own thoughts. Whoa! I'm thinking and staring at things. This is what it is to be human. This must be what Benjamin Franklin felt like. Just thinking about kites and candies. There's no going back. Could you imagine traveling without your smartphone? Could you imagine going away for the weekend through an airport without your smartphone? How do you do it? How did you do it? How did you even get to the airport? That's a good question. No Uber or Lyft. They're not responding to your smoke signals and cries for help. What happens in the airport if they change your flight and you need a new boarding pass and you're gate? Ah, ah. You're just going to wander the hallways of the airport and die at the airport. You're going to die at the airport outside of a Hudson News. It has a lot of things that could save you if only you had Apple Pay. Oh. Remember back during the troubles when they told us we couldn't see our family at all? Remember that? They said, don't do it. Don't go see your parents. You're going to kill them with your breath. You stay, no holidays for you. You stay away from your family for two years. Leave your family alone. Oh, man, those were the good old days. <laughs> oh, it was so great. We all had a built-in excuse. And now you go back and you see them, it's not that great. You always want it to be great, but it's not that great. I always want it to be great, and then I say something mean to my parents, and then I feel bad, and then I call them on the way home and apologize, just so they know I love them, and then my mom does something stupid with the phone and FaceTimes from her pants or something. And then I get mean again all over again. Oh, it's not good, it's not good. I love them to death, lucky to have them. If you have your parents, blessing, right? So lucky. So lucky. Doesn't mean we have to return their calls or respond to their moronic texts that are a mile long. But lucky to have them. Lucky. It's on my mother's shoulder and hit the trigger. Oh, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. It just gathered up her skin like pancake batter. can't get away, he can't turn it off. It was like a Sharpay running through a car wash. Yeah, it got the knot out, it also got her collarbone out and her shoulder blade. Not good. Long, don't know where they're going, turning in opposite directions. Should not be on a tandem bike. And then they get angry at me when I try and help them. They get defensive and angry. You don't know, we made you. We're your parents. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, but things have changed. My brain is still intact. Yours is shrinking by the minute. I didn't put a sponge in the toaster today. <laughs> Just trying to help. I'm looking forward to the time when my family helps me. I have two teenage daughters. They give me advice now. I welcome it. I'm happy. I don't, I don't have my act together. They don't know it's because of drinking, but I'm not, I'm not lucid all the time. I like the assistance. My daughters will be like, Dad, should the stove still be on? No, no, it should not. I made dinner an hour ago. That pot's going to have to soak. <laughs> Fill it with bubbles and we'll deal with it on Tuesday. <laughs> Dad, that was a stop sign. Good thing we're speeding. <laughs> now,
now I'm happy for the help, but they don't have to be so mean about it. They don't have to be so mean. Two teenage daughters, is there anything meaner in the world than two teenage daughters? Oh, they're so mean about it. And I look, I know how the world works. I know what we're doing here. In order for them to go out into the world, they have to destroy their parents. I understand that. You look at your parents and you're like, well, these two watched me for all this time. They don't know anything. I'll be fine out there. I get that, but I still have feelings. I'm like, Dad, you are a moron. <laughs> okay, just helping you grow. <laughs> I'll be in the garage wondering why I'm still here. <laughs> so mean. My daughter came into the kitchen and she goes, Dad, we're trying to watch a movie in the other room and we can hear you breathing. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll just stop that. I'll just stop breathing and living here and living all together. How about that? Would that make you happy? Think it would make her feel bad? She just high-fived her sister and went back to watching The Avengers. <laughs> we would never say that. I'd never say that to my father. I was scared of my father. I respected my father. My daughters are not scared of their father. Their father is scared of them. My 16-year-old was just staring me down at breakfast. That was very unsettling. She hasn't noticed me in the house for years. <laughs> All of a sudden, just focus. Do, 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 do. I don't like the way you chew your granola. Why do you chew your granola like that? What the hell does that mean? It's granola. It's big and it's crunchy. I gotta make it smaller or it's gonna rip apart my trachea. How do you eat your granola? You just swallow it whole like a snake? The permission or my knowledge went out and adopted a rescue pug. A pug. Came home with a pug. Did all the paperwork and showed up with a pug. If you don't know what a pug is, they advertise it as a dog. It is not. It is not. It has a weird, fat, turkey-like body. Four spindly legs that looks like it couldn't support that fat body. Dogs have paws. Pugs have long lady fingers with fancy nails off the ends. Some have four, some have three, some two, like a chicken foot. And the face of an arthritic 80-year-old man. Eyes that look like it belongs on a different animal altogether. It's like God was making it, ran out of pug eyes, and said, let's give it cow eyes and see how that goes. It doesn't go. This poor guy he just has these two bulbous things hanging out of his skull. The eyelids can't even get up and over and around the eyeball. He's never had his eyes shut as long as we've had him. He just struggles and snores all day long. Is he asleep right now? We're on a walk. Fun fact, fun fact, if a pug falls in the pool, it sinks immediately. Apparently, if your head's made of a concrete block, you're gonna face plant in the deep end. Bubbles still coming up on either side, still snoring. I don't think he even knows he's in the pool. I think he thinks he wandered into a strange part of the yard and his glaucoma's flaring up. Best part about the animal, his name is Frank. His name is Frank, which is hilarious. Anytime you're yelling at him, it's like you're in a movie with Sinatra. Come on, Frank, why are you acting that way? You've changed, Frank, you've changed. Like I said, he's a rescue pug. They found him on the mean streets of Downey, California. If you don't know where Downey is, it's a lot like here, but a little more stabby. Not a great part of the world. 
So why? Why was Frank just wandering the mean streets of Downey, California? Well, there's either something wrong with him, or he's wanted by the law. There's something wrong with Frank. There's something very wrong with Frank. Frank pees anywhere he wants to. Inside and out. He urinates wherever the hell he wants. I found this out because I got a black light on Amazon. Yes, I had to. I was suspicious. I never caught him in the act. I would just see him walking down the hall with his fancy lady, Pete. He's up to something. And I took that light and I went through my house. He has devastated my home. Ruined my home. My office in particular. At first I didn't say anything. I was like, what if it's me? But after careful analysis, it was Frank. So what do you do? What do you do if you have a pug just urinating all over? First I got angry, I'll admit it. I was like, what if I just leave open the door and see if he wants to go for a swim? I controlled myself. I took him to the vet. I was like, maybe there's really something wrong with Frank. And uh, maybe he has a bladder problem. I don't know what's wrong going on. I don't even know what's inside a pug, frankly. And they looked him over and he's a healthy son of a gun. Healthy bladder, kidney, no urinary tract infection. What's wrong with Frank, according to the vet, in medical terms, is Frank is an asshole. <laughs> he knows what he's doing, and he's going to continue doing it while he's staring me right in the face. So I was at a loss. I was at a loss. I didn't know what to do. My daughter loves him. Uh, he's here for keeps. So I was like, I gotta solve this problem. I went back to Amazon where all our answers are. <laughs> and they sell diapers for pugs. They sell diapers for pugs. They don't look like diapers. They look like a Velcro back brace that the UPS guy wears his last year on the job. You know what I mean? It's just hanging off his ass. Doesn't look like it's doing much. He's got sciatica. And I don't know. First, it felt weird. I'll admit it. It felt weird, you know? Uh, it felt weird putting a putting, uh, diaper on a dog. We don't call them diapers, by the way. We, we out of respect for Sinatra. We call them pants. Come on, Frank. We've got company over. Put on some pants for trying out loud. And it did feel weird. I mean, putting the pants on an animal felt strange. But then I thought about it. Look what these dogs have done in our short lifetime. When I was a child, a dog was a dog. He lived in the yard, tied to a tree. If you went somewhere, the dog waited for your return. It could be a day, it could be an hour, it could be a week. The dog waited obediently for your return. You would never ask your father, can we bring the dog with us on vacation? He would have spanked you immediately. And tied you to the tree and went away. And in our short years, look what these dogs have done. I see them everywhere now. I see them checking into hotels by themselves. I see them getting on flights to Hawaii, eating in fancy restaurants. Well, you did it, dog. I don't know how you did it, but you did it. You're part of the human world. Congratulations. You're here. And now that you're here, stick your tongue out of your ass and take a look around. And you'll notice we're all wearing pants. Because we know what our junk looks like and it should be covered up. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen a pug's penis, sir. You look like you've seen some things in your day. You maybe did some time. You probably worked down at the docks. You look like a tough guy. You, have you seen a pug's penis? No, yeah. Well, then you haven't seen it all. Google it after the show. Private browser. Private browser. <laughs> You gotta see it. It's weird. It's misshapen. It's covered in weird multicolored horse hairs. It follows you around the room when you walk by. It looks like something the devil would tickle you with. Put on some pants. So this is what I dealt with. This is what I dealt with during the troubles. This is what was going on in my home. And I could have said some things. I could have attacked my family. I'm pretty funny. And I didn't. I wanted them to be okay. So I bit my tongue. And I waited patiently until the fifth wave of COVID. <laughs> and then I flew here to Vegas where I could shit on them behind their backs. Thank you for having me. 
missed everybody. So nice being on tour. It's so nice seeing people again. Really, really, it's a beautiful thing. I missed everybody. It was very interesting how connected we all were, right? And we all went through the same fears, the same anxieties, the same angers, all at the same time. It was really kind of bizarre, very profound. And I started to miss all the extras. When we were really locked down, I missed all the people who make up your everyday life, people whose names you don't even learn, but they're just part of the rhythm of your everyday. I, uh, I really started to miss all of it for a while. Uh, but now that I've been out for quite some time, I'm starting to think that perhaps COVID may have killed the wrong people. <laughs> there are a lot of bad people out there, and they're all survived. I was naive. I thought we were going to be better. I thought we were going to come out of it and be helping each other out and buying ice cream for the guy in line behind us. That's not what I see. I see a lot of bad, rude, obnoxious people, and they're thriving. They're all there. Uh, the guy in the parking garage who sits in his car with it running and doesn't tell you whether he just parked or he's leaving. He's looking right at you. You're like, did you just come in? Are you on your way? Are you gonna? Uh -huh. He looks you right in the eye. He knows the information you need, and he says nothing. He's an asshole, and he lived. And I was under the impression this whole thing was caused by some kind of a virus. That's what I was told. It was a germ of some sort. Well, people are back to being just as disgusting as before. I see people blowing their nose in the air without a tissue. I saw a guy clipping his nails at the gate at the airport. Clipping his nails. Why? Why? Why is a nail clipper in your pocket? Why? What's in your other pocket? Use dental floss and toilet paper? What are you doing with your life? And when it was time to board, he just put the clippings in a pile and got on the plane. Yes, like I'll rake the leaves, but I'm not bagging them up. <laughs> Horrible behavior. Back to spitting on the sidewalks, those big man spits, those disgusting guttural wind up from the small intestine spits. It was six inches from going out the other way. <laughs> And this guy says, no, I'm bringing it up top. <laughs> and it just lands on the sidewalk like an alien afterbirth. It's got eyes and a heartbeat and feelings. It skitters into the sewer and replicates itself. And that's where COVID came from. <laughs> I'm not really kidding. That's where COVID came from. All of these examples are things that men do. Men act this way. Women don't do this. I never saw a woman blow her nose in the air without a tissue. It doesn't happen. These are things that men do. I know we're trying to figure it out. Was it a lab? Was it a bat? Was it a kangaroo? I don't know, but I know one thing's for sure. Men were involved. <laughs> you know. You know, you know, some guy dared another guy to do something weird to a bad for ten dollars. <laughs> and they went out to an alley next to a lab, and a bunch of other guys got in a circle around him and cheered him on and chanted. <laughs> and now we have to wear masks. Supermarkets and airplanes. Ugh. Horrible. We can't help it. Men are disgusting. We can't help it. We can't. Every man in here pees in his own yard. Pees in his own yard, right? Yeah. 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 No, Tom, not my guy. <laughs> yeah, your guy. When you're not looking behind the lounge chair, behind the grill. In the grill if it's on. <laughs> yeah, because that's a fun noise. <laughs> no, Tom, we live in an apartment on the sixth floor. Yeah, well, now it's a game. <laughs> Think about it. Any inconvenience we have out in the world is because men were there before you, did something horrible, and they had to change the rules. Why can't you just walk into a bathroom at a gas station? 
Why do they have to give you a key attached to a chain attached to a truck tire? <laughs> and you have to drag it around the building like an Egyptian slave. Why? Because men were in there. Horrible men doing horrible things. <laughs> Playing in the toilet like a bird bath. Putting their penis in the hand dryer. Yes. You think when the Dyson came out, that's not what they were doing? That's what they're doing. And I know the ladies' room is no treat either, but that's not because of anything you do in there. That's because men sneak in there when you're not looking. And use your hand dryer, too. But, but, as disgusting as we are, uh, we're good for you. Men are good for you. We make you stronger. We're immunity boosters. You think this whole thing was bad? It would have been twice as bad if men weren't fiddling their nuts and grabbing every door handle in town. So, you're welcome. The other thing that men have, which I don't understand why women don't have, it seems backwards to me, is this an overwhelming amount of self-esteem and self-confidence built on absolutely nothing. <laughs> nothing. We think we know everything and we think everyone wants us all the time. I'm guilty of it. I can't fix anything. I can't fix a thing in my house. And I'll get it in my mind and have a project and go to the hardware store where I go maybe twice a year. And I'll walk in looking for a screw or something. And they'll say, meet me at the door. Well, can we help you, sir? Can we help you find something? No, I'm good. <laughs> and I blow past them like I know where the screws are better than the people who put the screws where the screws go. And then for 20 minutes, I look around, and when I don't find it, I get mad at them. Because they're morons and put the screws in the wrong place. What is wrong with us? A guy will pee in his backyard, walk out the front door, and think, she wants me. Based on nothing. Nothing. And yet women are the most profoundly beautiful, mysterious creatures on this planet, just gliding around the globe like beautiful cotton candy goddesses. And yet you, for some reason, are filled with self-doubt. Do I look old? Do I look fat? I hate my hair. I hate my eyes. I hate my ass. And meanwhile, you're walking around with a pet orangutan. <laughs> who doesn't even look in the mirror. <laughs> Something is wrong. The epitome of male vanity is in the summer. In the summer, you will see a man, an 80-year-old man, strutting down the street in every town with a tank top, or worse, no shirt at all, just strutting down the street like an expired rotisserie chicken. <laughs> No muscle mass, just two bony chicken wings. Licorice nipples swaying in the wind. Gold chains tangled in his spooky cobweb body hair. With the nerve to hit on young women. I am not a lesbian. I am a, a straight married man. I've been married now for 22 years to the same woman. It's been a... Uh, uh, you don't know what I'm going through. <laughs> no, she's great. And that was very nice. But that applause is really for you. It's like, yay, he's doing it too. Ah! We celebrated our 20th anniversary on the day that COVID became real in America. You remember that day? March 11th of 2020. Yeah, that's when it became real, because that's when Tom Hanks got it. <laughs> you remember that day? It was all fun and games until Woody got corona. We were on our way to dinner to celebrate, 
And by the time we got there, the NBA closed, and Tom Hanks, the whole thing. And then we're like, should we still celebrate? I was like, yeah, we got it. We're not going to do this for a while. And we went, it was a horrible dinner. We just had three bottles of wine and texted our goodbyes to our loved ones. <laughs> but two decades, you know, of a pretty, you know, solid relationship. We don't fight a lot. It's pretty easy. We felt this should be celebrated. And uh, then we went home and uh, closed the blinds and shut the door. And within two weeks of isolation, we were both having fantasies of how we could kill each other. <laughs> and blame it on COVID. <laughs> It was like The Shining. I would just hear voices in my head as I was doing the dishes. Take her to the yard. <laughs> Bring some tissues, they'll never know. She was very suspect too. Her search history and her laptop, very suspicious. Power sauce, why, why? She's not into woodworking. She was gonna chop me up and feed me to Frank, that's why. <laughs> But I'm not gonna be up here attacking marriage. I'm not, I believe it. I think it's a good thing. I think it calms you down your life and it's a hard life to get through. To have a little assistance is uh, valuable. If you can meet the right person and lower your expectations of what you're gonna get out of it, you'll be very happy. And when I say lower your expectations, I don't mean to demean it, I don't. I think that's why people get divorced. They have too high of an expectation of what you're gonna get out of this one relationship. You gotta keep your eyes open, have some perspective, you know? You gotta be clear-headed when you're going into it. I have a friend who's thinking about getting married. He's such a moron. The things he's thinking about are so stupid. He's like, ah, oh, she's really great. I don't know, you know, they've been together like five years. She's cool, her family's nice, but I don't know if she's hot enough. Is she hot enough? Hot. Did you just say hot? Are you high? You're talking about marrying someone for the rest of your life. You don't care about hot. You care about strong. You don't want someone who's hot. You want someone who can pick up the other end of the couch. Right? Without taking the cigarette out of her mouth. That's who you marry. Are you married? Are you two married? Good for you. Yeah, I can see there's a, a zen-like quality about you. You kind of look alike. You're happy. Enjoying your lives. Good for you. How, how, how did you meet? At a Halloween party. Oh, that's interesting. What's that? You were dressed as Braveheart. Good move, sir. Boom! <laughs> How long ago was this? You were Angus, his ugly friend? But in your eyes, you're like, you're brave heart. And what were you dressed up as? A hippie girl. Short shorts. Short dress and boots. Oh, oh, oh. Angus happy. Angus and I. Good for you. <laughs> Did you like him right away? Yeah, you did, good for you. Until he asked you how old you were. Oh, jeez. How old are you? That's not how it went down? What are you trying to say, sir? <laughs> I'm here for you, let me explain yourself. What's that? Oh, to make sure you didn't get arrested. That's a compliment. Good for you, sir. You want to be all angus up and hitting on a 16-year-old? You're a beautiful hippie girl with no pants on. Good for you. You didn't have pants either. Oh, I don't even want to talk about the end of that night. How long have you been married now? 12 years. Good for you. Very exciting. Yeah, you can sell. You're happy. Yeah, there's no stress. And mock you in front of a whole room of people. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. Yeah, you're, you're, you're content. Yeah, you're not even worried if she's having a good time tonight. It's <laughs> not why you're here. <laughs> if you're married, you're like, oh, let's let someone else talk for an hour. <laughs> Each 
other during the pandemic. Good on you. Good for you. How about you folks? You married too? Yeah, good for you. How about you guys? You guys married? Just single? You have a wife? Just not here. You have a wife? No? Just single? Just out there on your own? Out in the wild? Good for you. He's here because you don't have a wife. Oh, you brought him along. Don't bring the wife. I don't do wives. Well, sometimes maybe, but you know what I mean. That's not what I meant. How old are you, sir? 40 this month. Congratulations. That's great. Single and 40. How are you doing it? How did you do it? You get drunk, dressed as Braveheart, and wander into a Halloween party. Get your shit together. Yeah, good for, good for you. It's, it's a mystery how that happens. Are you two married too? Yeah, and you're two married? Yeah? What do you mean, sure? What the hell's that? <laughs> Are you not married and you're just making shit up? <laughs> Look at you, you're in your married row down there. Just, yeah, the envy of every guy in the heaven. He's looking at you, how do you do it? 40 years old, just still going. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I don't, I, I'm not good dating, single, uh, too much uncertainty. You have a level of uh, emotional uh, maturity that I don't possess. Uh, I'm not good with it. If, if you get in a fight when you're dating, this is my problem. You get in a date when you're fighting, you could break up tonight. Tonight. It could be over at the end of that fight because you have that option. And that's a horrible option to have. Because if you do leave, oh my God. You gotta get your laptop and all your chargers. <laughs> get a new haircut, go back out into the world, lie to everybody all over again about how great you are. <laughs> oh, it's a horrible option to have. My wife and I can get in the same exact fight, and I'm not leaving. I know I'm not leaving because I don't have that option. I don't have, you don't have that option, you don't have that option. I'm not leaving. We get in a fight. I don't leave. I go to the pantry. I go to the pantry. And I get a sleeve of Girl Scout cookies. And I eat them one by one as I'm staring at my reflection in the toaster oven. Until I close, I don't have to be relevant. I get clothes when she's getting clothes. It reminds me I need clothes, right? That's why married couples end up looking alike. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to get sneakers. Be right back. Wait a minute. <laughs> I need sneakers, too. <laughs> you do? You want to come? Yeah, I want to come. Let's go. Sneaker day. <laughs> And we go to Foot Locker, and we sit in the married section. And they bring out sneakers that aren't made for any athletic event whatsoever. They're big, and they're white, and they got Velcro. And they're good for standing while we wait for each other. Should we get socks, too? You read my mind. Socks, shorts, and sneakers. Don't bag them up. We're going to wear them out. Do we look good? No, we don't look good. That wasn't the point. The point was to make each other unfuckable to the rest of the world. some pervert looking at your cool shoes and making a move on you. That'll ruin the good thing we got going. What about the sex, Tom? What about the sex? The same person for the rest of your life? What about the sex? Oh, shut up. Stupid ass sex. Grow up. You mean the same dumb sex that made every dumb decision you've ever made in your life? That sex? It, sex is a ride. It's a ride. First time I went on Space Mountain? Yeah, it was exciting. I didn't know I was going to do that. Whoa! Hey! I've been riding Space Mountain now for 22 years. I know how it goes. 
and I'm confused, nauseous, and in need of a nap. But I still love Space Mountain. I was in New York recently staying in a hotel. I heard people in the room next to me having sex. Very loud, very rhythmic, very joyful. And I was like, oh, all right, here we go. And 10, 15, 20 minutes straight, nonstop. I was like, all right, the pandemic's over. Uh, have fun in there. 25, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, nonstop, just as loud. I called my wife. I was like, I owe you an apology. <laughs> Thirty-five, forty minutes, forty minutes, still going, just as loud, just as rhythmic. Forty straight minutes. We never hit forty minutes. We never hit forty. You can add in dinner. We haven't hit forty minutes. I wouldn't want to. Forty straight minutes? Get off me! I got stuff to do. Where's my phone? In an hour, I just put in earplugs and cried myself to sleep. I don't want to know these people even exist out there. Woke up the next morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, had an interview to do, and I still heard it, just as loud. 7 in the morning, I realized, wait a minute, this isn't people, this is porn. This is porn. I was so relieved. But then I got angry. Who's in there at the ass end of a pandemic in a sterilized room, spraying all over the place with a 24-hour porn package like Frank? A man. A disgusting man, of course. Horrible. It's not easy. Relationships aren't easy. Being single's not easy. It's all difficult. It's hard to see the future. That's what it is. It's hard to see where you're headed, where your partner's headed. Right? You met Braveheart that night? Yeah, you didn't know he was going to turn into a guy in Tommy Bahama, hanging around Las Vegas. No idea. A lovable guy, right? Do you, have, do you have weird hobbies now? Yeah, what do you do? What's he do? He has a train room. I love the train room. I'm not kidding, I love the train room. I only break the trains out during Christmas, and the village grows every year. I get more people, and I put it in, and it keeps growing, and I have thought about it. I thought, what if we just move all the cars out of the garage, and I can keep expanding? And then my wife shows me her power sauce, and I go back into my room. Good for you, how big is your train room? You've got dark vignettes, a lot of dark scenes. What is this, murder town? What are you talking about? What do you mean dark? Dark in what way? Alien abductions? It's like a macabre train village? He really is? Oh, you're scary. Do you do that so the children from the neighborhood won't come and visit? It's very subtle. Oh, that's even scarier. <laughs> very subtle. There's shit in there you, only you know about. It's got a lot of sublime adult humor in there. Nudity? No nudity. Just murder. It's Vegas. You have a hotel scene, you need some girls out front. So, oh. I know, you're confused. Just let me ask you a couple more questions. Just make sure you're all safe on the way out. <laughs> so it's set in Vegas? Kind of, some of it. There's car fires. Hazmat scenes. Murders, dead bodies, like, not yet, not yet, working on it. So, so when you're, uh, when he's down in, in hell, setting up the spooky ghost train, what are you doing? Working, you're at work. Like, I gotta make some money so we can buy some miniature axes. 
baby body bags. <laughs> Do you have a name for this town, sir? This is the coolest thing I've heard all year, by the way. I don't know why more people aren't into this. Do you have an Instagram account I can follow? I don't know if it shows that I'm demented too, but I want to visit. Oh, you missed some things, sister. You have no idea. Your friends will have to explain. Don't look this way. Don't make eye contact with anyone. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> How am I still single, he says. <laughs> home baking bread, making pancakes, <laughs> putting flour, cut flowers out. This guy's putting murder and mayhem. <laughs> Maybe you gotta change your tactics. <laughs> this is the greatest story. Thank you for sharing that. You need to name this town. You gotta name this town. It's gotta have... What is it? Tomville. Tomville. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Papa checks in, but don't check out. <laughs> oh, it's going to be scary at Christmas. See, you had no idea this was, wait, right? When you were there, the hippie girl, and you're like, hey, Braveheart, I'm 18. You won't go in that room. No, I wouldn't. You won't come out. <laughs> They'll be like, what's that mountain over there? Don't ask any questions. <laughs> it's Barbara covered in shellac. <laughs> this is getting weirder by the minute. <laughs> That's the thing, you have no idea. Everyone has these stories. You, you marry somebody and they turn into something else. That's what happens when you go the distance. That's what happens. I just found out that my wife doesn't like when I read. <laughs> she doesn't like when I read. That's new. Anything, a book, a magazine, a cereal box. If my wife sees me reading, she doesn't think, oh, he needs some quiet time. No, oh, she thinks he's bored. Let me tell him a story about my sister at work. <laughs> oh, he's reading a book. He must be really bored. Let me tell him about my mom's new lease agreement on her apartment. <laughs> the other time she likes to talk is late at night. Late at night, when I get into bed, put my head on the pillow, and turn out the light. That's when she likes to talk about cancer, child abductions, <laughs> and the end of days. Whatever bad news she gathered up during the day, she's going to sprinkle on my side of the bed. Until she unloads and starts to snore. As soon as I turn out the light, I spoke to your mom on the phone today. She sounded so old. I wonder how much more time we have with her. Have you pet the cat recently? He's got a tumor on his neck. Did I mention I spoke to your mom on the phone today? Who's older, your mother or your father? One of them's not making it to Christmas. I can feel it. I can't believe our daughters are going away to college soon. It's terrible to think they'll be out in the world with all those horrible men. They're probably no more horrible than what they're doing on their phones right now. Carol's daughters have been taking pictures of their vaginas and putting them on the internet. Do you think that's what our daughters are doing right now? 20 feet from our bed? On our family plan? I spoke to your mom and I spoke to your mom. And I stared at the ceiling for six straight hours. Just waiting for the sun to come up so I can get some coffee and get away from this devil woman I sleep with. strange life, isn't it? You worry about everything and everybody. We're here on this planet to connect with people and love people and make new people. 
And then as soon as you do, you're worried for the rest of your life. It's terrifying. It's a terrifying existence. You just gotta drink and do a lot of drugs, I guess. <laughs> Gamble, do whatever you gotta do. Eat cans of Pringles, I don't know. There's something to not think about it for a second. The first time we took our daughter as a newborn for her first doctor's appointment, I knew at that moment I was never going to sleep another day in my life. <laughs> right? You bring her into that first appointment, make sure everything's okay. The doctor's like, okay, everything's good. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, she seems healthy. One thing, ah, uh, geez, what is it? Uh, her head is in the fifth percentile. Well, what the hell does that mean? She's got a little head. My wife is sobbing immediately. It's okay, we'll keep an eye on it. Every six months, we'll take a look at it. I'm like, oh, okay. Trying to pretend it's not a big deal. Got her home, snuck her into the playroom, just started blowing in her mouth. <laughs> Come on, sixth percentile. <laughs> of course it worked out, of course it worked out. Everything works out that way. We all even out. You never go on a job interview and see a guy there with a golf ball size head. Hello. <laughs> Little bottle cap for a hat. Hello. Tell us why you want to work here. I don't know if I do. Are there more of you little headed people here? Complicated thing. You know, you don't even know. That's the biggest thing is you're not even in control of them. You're not in control of them at all because you don't even know what they're doing. You have no idea what they're up to. Because you always hide stuff from your parents. We all did. Right? That's called becoming a person. It doesn't have to be something evil. It could be playing the flute. Hide it in your socks, none of their damn business. <laughs> Walk to school every day with a flute in your sock. <laughs> a year later, -la 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 -la. where'd you learn that, little guy? You're not the boss of me, you fat bastard. <laughs> All right, angry flute player, okay. <laughs> you have no idea. You care about them, love them, want to do the right things, but you don't know what they're doing. My daughter came home from college. I know, uh, your freshman year, she's like, I'm like, oh, I make dinner for everybody. Would you like some wine with us? You're a grown-up now. Would you like some alcohol with us? She goes, no, Dad, I don't like to drink. I don't like alcohol. Oh, what a good parent I am. <laughs> I only smoke weed, she said. <laughs> oh, how long have you been doing that? Since I was a freshman in high school. <laughs> Really? Where? In my room. In my house. Four years, straight A student, high as a kite. She loved the weed. Here's the problem. I loved the weed more. And for four years, I didn't touch it because I wanted to be a good example for the children. For four years, I walked around straight as an arrow, eating nothing but handfuls of melatonin gummies. So I get some kind of buzz and eventually fall asleep. She was doing bong hits right down the hall. Raising teenage girls now, very complex. I'm not done with it yet. It's still worrisome, you know? It's very different from when you were all raised as young women. It's changing by the day. These young girls now, they're changing the whole story. You know, when my daughters and my sisters would come down on a Friday night, I have two sisters, if they came down on a Friday night on their way to a party, if they were dressed too provocatively, showing too much skin, my father would let them know that by calling them whores. <laughs> 